Um, so second thing, I guess, what's going on with COVID-19 in Japan right now. So, um, yeah, basically, uh, it's, I suppose this week as opposed to last week, it, there were talks in the start of the month that it was going to go up to 5,000 in early August, which it did. And then it would continue on that trend and be 10,000 by the end of August. Uh, it's getting towards the end of August and it's sort of leveled out, honestly, at around five to 6,000. It is still going up, but it's not above 6,000 yet per day in Tokyo. It's 25,000 nationwide. What is happening is prefectures other than Tokyo are now seeing record numbers. Um, what's not being said, but it seems to me to be clearly the case, is that um, uh, people are traveling for Obon right now school summer vacations and uh, last week and this week was Obon vacation when people travel to their hometowns to see their grandparents and to go and visit the family graves and whatnot so clearly there's lots of people Tokyo is emptied out as it does this time of year with people traveling all over the country and it seems in addition to Tokyo banana um, souvenirs that are the, like the best uh, souvenir you can get from Tokyo uh, they are also uh, delivering COVID-19 everywhere, and uh, everywhere is now like getting record highs and, and crazy numbers of COVID, even in rural prefectures. And again, this totally looks very much like it's probably the result of people moving around when they really shouldn't be moving around right now. Um, remember, governors have said, please don't cross, um, you know, prefectural boundaries, but these are not like states and there's no way to control movement. And people are just saying, hey, you're having an Olympics. I'm going to go see grandma and they're doing that and they're, they're giving grandma COVID it looks like. So um, yeah, that's happening. And because again, the number of people going out and about the number of bars, just ignoring the request to close at eight and so on, the, the chief scientific, the Dr. Fauci of Japan, Dr. Omi, uh, I don't know if he's actually a doctor or not, but the chief scientific advisor, yeah, now the, the, that committee is saying, okay, maybe now Japan does need to have coercive like penalties for breaking uh, lockdown uh, restrictions. Um, so they're looking at that at the moment. Um, yeah, the another another thing that was kind of interesting is uh, there's been this thing in Japan where in other countries you hear about companies making it mandatory or hospitals making it mandatory that staff have to be vaccinated to be able to uh, particularly service or customer-facing industries or whatever. In Japan, there's very much an emphasis, apart from the fact that in Japan there are wor the worker rights here are crazy. You cannot be fired from a job. You can be on a temporary contract that is simply not renewed. That does happen. Uh, a lot, but the reason they set up that system for contracts was because, um, a bottle cap there, um, was because uh, it was basically impossible to fire people. I used to joke, uh, you know, at work in my last job that, um, you know, when I was explaining this to, to foreign people, how hard it is to fire people, even problematic people or underperforming people, I would say, you know, the short of them actually burning down the building, you can't terminate someone for, um, you know, performance issues. Uh, and then uh, the employment lawyer who was in the room at the time said, no, no, actually last month there was a case where someone actually deliberately committed arson uh, and was convicted of it, uh, had a criminal conviction for arson of the office and was still reinstated <laughs> as an employee. So worker rights are pretty well protected here. So the idea that you might um, adversely you know, like treat, bully someone or pressure someone to getting a vaccination or uh, threaten people with dismissal or not allow them back to work if they don't get vaccinated. Uh, under Japanese labor laws, it's just unthinkable. And so companies are not just doing this to be considerate towards the feelings of anti-vaxxers. They're actually afraid of getting sued by unions. Um, and so that's why there's this real thing about emphasizing that, um, you know, um, that you should really do vaccinations, but they are voluntary and they're up to you and we're not going to force you to do it. Um, so, you know, given the perception that, you know, uh, making it mandatory to get vaccinations would be like the equivalent of bullying employees, um, I suppose if there was any company in Japan that was going to break that threshold, it would be Watami. You might recall Watami, I've mentioned on the show a couple of years ago, it's a, um, a izakaya chain with a me actually a member of the LDP in parliament, the, the head of this company. Um, they were famous for uh, working their employees to death and after working them to death, um, not being sorry for it. In fact, um, saying that, you know, maybe if they just, you know, worked a little bit harder or something like that, you know, um, so basically, you know, a good work, good employee, you know, works for two dollars an hour, uh, eight days a week, kind of kind of literally, literally put out statements like that, basically just talking about what a bruising company it is to work at. So, yeah, it's natural that they would be the first ones to say and they are a restaurant and bar chain. So there's actually legitimate reason I could imagine for them saying that we want all staff to be vaccinated. But, um, yeah, in terms of being the brave company willing to bully their employees first <laughs> uh, a, a certified black company like uh, Watami is kind of not too surprising there so that's a thing that's happened with COVID-19 um, 
The other things that are happening are, yeah, in Tokyo, the hospital system, a lot of stories this week, distressing stories, actually, which I have not put into here, but to give you the quick summary, um, the, the, the medical system in terms of coping with uh, COVID-19 is now collapsed. It's gone. The, the, there is no capacity. Um, there are now lots of cases where um, there's a case where... Um, well, now it's very common that uh, hospital ambulances, you know, hospitals are not obliged to take patients. Uh, so, you know, often ho ambulances will drive around for hours looking for, uh, even in normal times, they look around, they drive around for hours. Sometimes they'd have 20, 30 rejections from hospitals until they can place a patient. But now there are cases, 60% of um, cases where people need to be hospitalized for COVID-19 in emergency cases, they cannot find beds that will take them. It's not that all the beds in hospitals are being taken up. Most hospitals reserve certain numbers of beds because they have to have them isolated. They have to have 24 hours sort of staff looking after them. Um, there's lots of restrictions. Or, or, or considerations of that so you know some hospitals are deliberately not having any hospital beds because it takes up their you know for COVID-19 because it takes up their other business that they make money from it takes all the resources of their staff and whatnot but for the uh, hospital beds available in Tokyo they are now all taken up and the hospitals are not taking any more people so even people who would normally be on ventilate respirators for example ventilators they're, they're, they're being uh, put on this at home and being told to look after themselves at home and there are now multiple cases of people dying um, while at home when they suddenly get worse or but frankly these are people who are in normal situations would absolutely be in uh, you know hospital to begin with and they're being supervised there so really dangerous to have it right now people in their 40s people in their 30s are dying at home um, plus other cases another case during the week where a mother who was uh, pregnant or pregnant woman who had COVID-19 um, basically uh, needed to go to hospital for a sort of a, 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 a birth, having birth troubles. And um, because she had COVID-19, they wouldn't accept her in any of the hospitals. And so they forced her to give a sort of birth at home with the ambulance staff and the baby died. And that caused a, a lot of fuss. So basically, there's just uh, if you get COVID-19 right now, and there's cases of people in their 20s and 30s like now dying at home while they're waiting. There's just no hospital beds for you if you get COVID-19 right now. I think the media is playing this up deliberately to scare people because, frankly, people have sort of lost their motivation to comply with requests and not go out. Um, and if they want to do that, I think it's it's working. I mean, it's got it's gotten so bad. I'm just kind of not following it anymore. Um, so yeah, yeah, the, the the system in Tokyo is basically the, the the chief medical advisor, Dr. Omi, that I just showed you. He basically has said to the. Um, uh, He's appealing to Tokyo hospitals to allocate more more COVID beds, um, you know, and to uh, not try to reserve a, a, an additional capacity for other sort of, you know, elective surgeries and stuff like that. Um, pointing out that the system in Tokyo is just not coping right now and they need hospitals to be more cooperative. Um, they can't force the hospitals to take more patients. This is a thing. So, um, yeah, right now, I mean, if you need to be scared, this is the reason. You know, if you catch COVID-19 right now, there are no, there, you, it's highly likely that you will not get hospital treatment for it, even if you need it to live. Um, and so that's going to, you know, that makes the prospect of uh, dealing with it, even if you're younger. And the fact that, of course, Delta is so scary and that there are people in 40s uh, and 30s dying from it is also pretty terrifying. So that's what's happening in Tokyo right now.